Hi friends, welcome back. In the previous video, we have already discussed about Markovnikov's rule. I will provide you the link in the description for your reference. So somebody have asked to post a video on anti-Markovnikov rule. So now let us move on to our topic that is anti-Markovnikov rule. So before that, let us have a look on Markovnikov's rule. So here it is a Markovnikov's rule. So this Markovnikov rule states the negative part of the addendum get attached to the unsaturated carbon which possess less number of hydrogen atoms. So this is about Markovnikov's rule. So now let us have a look on anti-Markovnikov's rule. So here anti-Markovnikov's rule. A small change will be there, a small difference between Markovnikov rule and anti-Markovnikov rule. So here, the negative part of the addendum gets attached to unsaturated carbon which possesses lesser number of hydrogen atoms. But in case of anti-Markovnikov rule, the negative part of the addendum gets attached to carbon having higher number of hydrogen atoms. So the negative part of the addendum, addendum means which is to be added. So that means the reagent. So the reagent consists of both positive part and negative part. So here we have to consider the negative part. So the negative part of the addendum should be added to the carbon which possess higher number of hydrogen atom. That is about anti-Markovnikov's rule. Okay. So let us clearly understand this definition by taking one example. So let us have an example of an unsaturated alkene. So here the unsaturated alkene that is this one propene, prop 1 in. So now let us add this prop 1 in to HBr. This gives rise to CH3, CH and CH2. So this is the double bond. So these two are the double bonded carbons. So these two are the double bonded carbon. So in between these two double bonded carbons, the negative part should be added to the carbon which possess higher number of hydrogen atoms. That means this carbon. So here the bromine should be attached to this carbon and hydrogen should be attached to this carbon. Isn't it? So now the product will be 1 bromo propane. 1 bromo propane. So another product, there is a chance of getting another product. So suppose if Br is added here and hydrogen is added here, the product will be like this CH3, CH, Br and CH3. This is 2 bromo propane. So in between these two products, this one is the major product. So this is the major product according to anti Markovnikov's rule. 1 bromo propane is the major product according to anti Markovnikov rule. So how this product will be the major and this reaction takes place in presence of peroxide H2O2 this is hydrogen peroxide or any other peroxides. So this reaction takes place in presence of peroxides. So in order to understand the major product how this major product is obtained let us have a look on the mechanism of this reaction. So you have to remember one point, this anti of rule takes place only in presence of peroxides only. So that's why this is also called as peroxide effect. Peroxide effect. Okay, let us have a look on mechanism. So during the mechanism, this reaction takes place through free radical mechanism that means this reaction involves the formation of free radicals so now first of all this peroxide will decomposes to get free radicals so suppose if you take any free radical like this r o o r so this is also one of the free radicals one of the peroxide so this peroxide decomposes to get free radicals those free radicals are always obtained by homolytic fission. Remember, free radicals are always obtained by homolytic fission. So, the homolytic fission of this peroxide bond, we get two free radicals. That is RO free radicals. We get two RO free radicals. Now, this free radical reacts with 
the addendum that is hbr so here hbr is the addendum addendum means which is to be added so now hbr reacts with one of the free radical to get roh and br free radical is formed so this is br free radical is formed and roh is formed now this br free radical will react with the alkene so here we are taking the alkene ch3 ch double bond ch2 so this will react with br free radical so this reaction may takes place in two ways there are two chances for reacting this br free radical the first one is this pi bond will undergo homolytic fission upon homolytic fission of this pi bond we get two free radicals one is on this carbon other one is on this carbon so suppose if this br free radical is attached to this free radical carbon free radical we get ch3 ch single bond ch2 here this br is attached to this free radical carbon free radical then we get br here and one more free radical is present here isn't it now again suppose if br free radical is attached to this carbon then we get ch3 ch br single bond ch2 and here free radical is formed isn't it so this is the first step so during the addition of bromine free radical the addition may takes place in two ways this bromine free radical may attach to the first carbon or second carbon suppose if the bromine free radical is attached to the first carbon we get this free radical if the bromine free radical is attached to second carbon we get this free radical so what is the difference between these two free radicals so here we have to observe the point here it is a secondary free radical secondary free radical and here it is a primary free radical so now further it reacts with the roh which is formed in the previous step so this abstract h free radical the secondary free radical abstract h free radical then it will become ch3 ch2 ch2 br suppose from this molecule ch3 ch br and ch3 will be formed like this again the free radical is remained as it is that means it reacts nothing that means it is it will react as catalyst so these there are two chances for getting two different types of products the first one is one bromopropane the second one is two bromopropane so between these two which is major so this is the major so from this mechanism we can clearly understood this is the major so why this is major so this major product is formed through the formation of secondary free radical isn't it so what is the order of stability of free radicals so order of stability of free radicals is tertiary greater than secondary greater than primary so this is the order of stability of free radicals so this can be explained by taking hyper conjugation remember carefully this is the order of stability of free radicals the stability of free radicals also follows the stability of carbonium ions both are having same order so here this is secondary free radical and this is primary free radical so that's why the reactions are always proceed to takes through the formation of stable intermediates so here the secondary free radical is the stable intermediate that's why the product is always this one is the major product okay so in this way we can conclude the definition the negative part means here br minus if it is the negative part that can, that can be considered as br minus so but here it involves in homolytic fission that's why it forms free radicals so the br should be attached to unsaturated carbon which is having high number of hydrogen atoms that is anti marconic of rule and this reaction takes place only in presence of peroxides that's why it is called as peroxide effect and it is also called as karash effect or karash rule this is also called as karash rule and you have to remember one more point so here mostly 
the reaction takes place this peroxide effect takes place only in presence of hbr it is observed under hbr because if you consider the halogen acids hf hcl hbr like this hf hcl hbr and hi so mostly this peroxide effect is observed under hbr only so why so here if you consider the bond strength among these four so the border of bond strength is like this so hf is having more bond strength so due to the more bond strength of hf and hcl these two cannot be dissociated to form free radicals under h nu that means photolysis so mostly these photolysis reactions are peroxide reactions proceeds through free radical mechanism so the formation of free radical does not takes place in hf and hcl due to high bond strength so mostly this takes place and hi hi also decomposes to form h free radical and i free radical but this is weak bond hi is we possess weak bond the bond strength is low that's why the formed i free radicals will recombine to form iodine molecule that's why this iodine free radical does not react with alkenes but it again reacts with another molecule of another free radical of iodine to form i2 molecule okay recombination of iodine free radical takes place that's why it forms i2 molecule so mostly this peroxide effect is observed under hbr when the reaction takes place with hbr then only it is observed okay i hope you like this video thank you